Hi, I'm Delusion Dispeller, and I started thinking about what I would like to make another video about, and I've come to this. I've talked a lot about how I believe people can be addicted to people. I've even mentioned that I have had people addictions in my past, but I guess I've never really gone into what that looks like, or looked like, I should say, because I'm no longer people addicted. I don't let myself get that imbalanced in relationships to have that problem. But when I did, I would like to share with you some of the feelings and the things that I went through and some of the behaviors I exhibited when I had that problem. So, here we go. I had a lot of people addictions, actually. My addiction took place in the form of always needing to have that one best friend or that one leader that paid special close attention to me. In my case, it was my Spanish teacher first. When I was in um, the beginning of my high school years, ninth grade, I had a Spanish teacher. Um, it was a female. And it was kind of like the teacher's pet, giving her an apple type of thing and whatever. I mean, we joke about that sort of thing where, you know, you give an apple to the teacher. And obviously, nowadays, I don't think that happens too much. But in my case, I really did give her an apple. And I gave her a lot of other things. I would make little gifts for her and leave them on her desk. And it was just like this little game I played to be special to the teacher type of thing. Then when I got into um, the next place that I went for high school, because I've been to several schools, um, it was the English teacher. And in that case, it was like I wanted this one-on-one -on -one attention with him. I would give him notes. Um, sometimes I would write him letters. And I often asked for extra help with homework just so that I could be close to this guy. Now, yeah, there was a little bit of a crush there, too. And um, so that kind of played into it as well. And the English teacher would meet with me after school to kind of discuss things that were going on at home with my abusive stepfather. And I just, I, there was a lot of fantasy involved <clears throat> in that whole relationship. Um, and it wasn't like bad fantasies. It was just like fantasizing him, like being my doctor and taking care of me, um, being my bodyguard. I mean, stuff like that. Like he was, but he was just one on one with me in my mind. And I would hate it when other students would come up if I was getting helped on homework or an assignment and they would interrupt us when he was talking to me and explaining things. I would just get so angry and hot under the collar because this was my time with him. And so that was one type of the beginning of the addictive addictions to people that I had. Um, I want to keep checking the time on this too because I want to keep these short and just make a bunch of them instead of, you know overbearing videos with too much time on them that you can't pay attention to. All right. The next thing was, so that was during my high school years. When I, excuse me, became an adult and I was a married adult, um, I didn't have a good relationship with my current husband or my husband at the time. And therefore I was still looking to fill that empty void inside my heart. So I would still keep having people addictions in one case, it was the pastor's wife. Um, I verbally walked up to her and told her that God called me to be her right-hand man, her helper. Or, as we say it in some Christian circles, it's called an armor bearer. God called me to walk by your side, to be mentored by you, to be your apprentice, to learn from you. Um, she played keyboard really well. God called me to learn keyboard from you. And he told me that you would teach me. And <coughs> he told me that... I was to submit under you, and you're going to show me how to um, grow closer to Jesus and things like that. So when I told her this, um, her friends started noticing some red flags that I was getting too attached to her. Um, when she did finally realize that I was, she pulled away. Um, the more she pulled away, the more attached I became. I started writing letters to her. I started making sure to hug her goodbye after Christian church services. And I even started a competition with my children, my daughters, to see who got the hug after church each week from her. I know it sounds disturbing and sick, and it was. But that's why I'm telling you that I really can relate to addictive behaviors. At one point, the pastor's wife became my counselor and then did a deliverance session on me, or as you would know it, like an exorcism. They believed I had de demons that were causing to be, me to be so attached and insecure and feeling so inadequate and have low self-esteem. So they prayed for me. 
And they had her lead the prayer. And she repeatedly told me, look into my eyes, Laura. I love you. I love you. I want you to believe that I love you. We love you. We're not yelling at you. We're yelling at the devils that are controlling you. But we love you. I love you. I love you. And the more she said that, you have to understand something about these types of addictive relationships. There is oxytocin in these things too. So the more she said, I love you, I love you, and look me in the eye, and you know, um, she kept convincing me that she loved me. That just cemented the bond and the attraction or the addiction that I had to her even more. And no, there was no lesbian type thing going on, so don't get that idea. I was not even remotely, you know, thinking about that or in that way. It was more of a ministry attraction that I wanted to be you know, by her side and learn from her, etc. So stay tuned. I'll talk more about this and some other stuff. Thanks.